From WBNG, the Southern Tier's number one local news. This is 12 News at 11. Good evening and thank you for joining us for WBNG 12 News here at 11. I'm Zach Grady and we begin tonight in Broome County and the Dicks Open at Enjoy Golf Club. Now just a less than a week away. Friday, we find out who is headed to the Southern Tier for the annual event. 78 players will make their way to the 607 as part of the star-studded field. Returning and looking for his third straight win will be Patrick Harrington. Also in this year's field, major winners David Duval, Ernie Els, and Vijay Singh. Fan favorite John Daly also joining the 78-man Champions Tour field. Make sure to head over to WBNG.com for all the details on this year's Dick's Open PGA Champions Tour event. And if you can't make it out to the Enjoy Golf Course in Endicott for the day, or just trying to avoid those possibly record-breaking temperatures that Connor Thompson will tell you about, tune in all day, Thursday, June 20th, when we will be live from the Dick's Open from 3 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Head over right now to the 12 Sports homepage as well for all of those details. United Way's Day of Action was celebrated in Broome County today with volunteer work being done at the West Family Branch YMCA in Johnson City. The Day of Action encourages volunteer work in communities throughout the country. Several volunteers from UPS visited the YMCA to do landscaping work on its playgrounds. They say they have spent years volunteering at the YMCA and will continue to keep it in good shape. Officials of the YMCA say the playground is over 20 years old and is beginning to look a bit outdated. They say the maintenance being done will keep it up to date for upcoming summer camps. A lot of times it's just, you know, cleaning up vines and the fence, uh, pulling weeds. And every year we spread some new mulch to make sure everything is all safe for the kids. So if someone falls, it's nice and cushiony and soft. Volunteers say they hope to keep the playground not only a safe, but welcoming space for future generations. Today is World Blood Donor Day, and the American Red Cross is urging the community to consider donating blood and platelets as they are critically needed right now. This is due to a drastic decline of donations over the last several weeks. The organization says all blood type donations are needed, especially those with type O. The Red Cross says a record-breaking summer travel and severe weather is to blame for the lack of donations, especially as these conditions are expected to last all summer season long. If you are interested in donating blood, here are some local locations for you to visit. We start in Broome County. You can donate blood on June 15th, starting at 8.30 a.m. at St. Francis Church, located at 1049 Shenango Street. Head to the American Red Cross in Johnson City at 10.30 a.m. on June 21st. That is located at 365 Harry L. Drive. The Vestal United Methodist Church also hosting a blood drive. That on June 22nd from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. That location is 328 Main Street. We move to Shenango County where there are multiple locations, but we will highlight a couple here for you. You can donate on June 18th at the Norwich Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 2782. That starts at 1 p.m. and is located at 61 East Main Street. On June 20th, the South New Berlin Fire Department hosting a blood drive. That goes from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. 3 519 State Highway 8, the location. And lastly, Tioga County. On June 27th, you can donate blood at the Waverly United Methodist Church, located at 158 Chemung Street. That starts at 9 a.m. Those are just a few don donation locations. For a more detailed list, head over to the Red Cross. Dot, sorry, Red Cross Blood dot org. If you give blood from June 10th to the 30th, you will also get a $15 e-gift card to a store of your choice. We update now a story we brought you last week out of Tompkins County. Official have, officials have reopened the Monkey Run natural area after attacks from a coyote shut down the trails. On June 4th, the trails were located on June 4th, the trails located in Ithaca were closed due to reports of multiple attacks of people and dogs by a coyote. While there is no information that the coyote was rabid, rabies is suspected due to the animal exhibiting, quote, unusually aggressive behavior. 
Tompkins County Whole Health says continuous efforts have been made to locate the animal, including surveying the area and using game cameras. Despite these efforts, at this time, the coyote has not been found. Tompkins County officials encourage everyone to remain cautious and keep their dogs on leashes. Tioga County residents have been expressing concern over a bear that's been roaming the area with its head stuck in what appears to be a metal bucket. According to the Department of Environmental Conservation, on June 11th, officers responded to East Berkshire Road in the town of Berkshire to search for the bear you see here on your screen. Search efforts were unsuccessful and continued the next day when the wildlife staff located the bear but were unable to safely capture it. On June 13th, the animal was spotted around 7 p.m. in a tree in a backyard in Newark Valley, but the DEC says onlookers scared the bear off and disrupted their efforts to secure the animal. The DEC asks the public to call the number here on your screen with any sightings and to stay quiet, move slowly, and observe from a distance. If you are looking to be an early voter for the New York primary election, the deadline to register is tomorrow, June 15th. Tomorrow is also the deadline to request early mail and absentee balance for the primary. In-person requests for an early voting must be received by June 24th. The mail and absentee ballot return deadline is June 25th. Ballots must be returned in person as well by June 25th. And speaking of the election, New York Attorney General Letitia James announced that the Office Elections Protection Hotline will be available for the primary election during the early voting period. The goal of the hotline is to help troubleshoot and fix any issues that voters may have. The hotline will be open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. during the early voting period. That is from June 15th through June 23rd. Those times, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Election Day, June 25th. If you have any election issues, call the number you see here on your screen. Governor Kathy Hochul urging New Yorkers to prepare for several days of extreme heat and high humidity across the state across the next week. Heat and humidity are forecast to increase across the Empire State starting Monday with feels like temperatures exceeding 100 degrees on Tuesday and Wednesday specifically. An event in Syracuse where the governor spoke on the particular dangers of the heat. Must be cause of the fact that heat is the number one cause of death for weather related fatalities here in the United States. So no matter what your health is, no matter what age you are, whatever where you live, there are going to be dangers for extreme heat and weather uh, beginning immediately. The governor also stressed that the summer is just beginning. It will be important to check in on your loved ones and neighbors during this time of extreme weather. And tonight, President Joe Biden is calling on the Congress to ban bump stocks to, quote, save lives after the Supreme Court overturned a federal gun ban on the gun accessory. The device allows a semi-autic rifle to fire hundreds of rounds per minute, according to the president. Jan Crawford reports from outside the Supreme Court. Keep your head down. Go. Keep the ban on bump stocks took effect five years ago after they were used in the Las Vegas shooting that killed 60 people. To ban all devices that turn legal weapons into machine guns. Then President Trump directed the ATF to ban the devices, which allow semi-automatic rifles to fire hundreds of bullets in a minute by classifying them as machine guns. The stock bumps back and forth between the shooter's shoulder and trigger finger, allowing for rapid fire. Trump's executive action reversed Obama administration policy, which said it was up to Congress to ban bump stocks. In the 6-3 decision today, the Supreme Court said Trump got it wrong and that bump stocks don't fit under a 1934 law regulating machine guns. Writing for the majority, Justice Clarence Thomas detailed how the ATF on more than 10 separate occasions and over several administrations concluded that a semi-automatic rifle equipped with a bump stock is not a machine gun because it cannot fire more than one shot by a single function of the trigger. In a separate opinion, Justice Sam Alito signaled there were no Second Amendment concerns, emphasizing there is a simple remedy. Congress can amend the law.
But the ruling prompted a fierce dissent by Justice Sonia Sotomayor, who argued the decision would have deadly consequences. Seventeen states in the District of Columbia currently have laws banning bump stocks. In Congress, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said Democrats are ready to enact a federal ban but need Republican support. And gun control advocates said Americans want a ban on bump stocks before another tragedy. The American people have waited long enough for real action. The president has said he will sign a bill. It's time to act. We're still waiting on a decision in another gun rights case that does raise Second Amendment concerns. That one is whether the government can prevent a person under a domestic violence restraining order from having a gun. We expect that decision and all the rest of them sometime between now and the next two to three weeks. Jan Crawford, CBS News, the Supreme Court. Still to come here tonight at 12 News at 11, President Biden met with Pope Francis at the G7 summit. We will have all the details on that when we return. Have you heard about summer in New York? The secret spots. Hikes you want to get lost on. The views no one will believe. Rides for the whole family. Start your getaway at iloveny.com. At Matthews Planet Pre-Owned, you can get a quality pre-owned vehicle for about half the cost of a new car. We have over 800 like new pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs available. Many priced under 20 grand with no haggling necessary to get our lowest price. And our salespeople are here to help, never to pressure you. Trust the planet at Matthews on the Parkway or planetpreowned.com. Here. And 12 News is ready to tee off coverage right here on Thursday, June 20th from Enjoy Golf Course. Watch us live at 3 to 6 30 for your first alert weather forecast. And exclusive highlights from the course all tournament long here on WBNG. So grab your clubs. And remember to join us live Thursday, June 20th from 3 to 6.30 as 12 News brings you all things Dick's Open. Sponsored by these local businesses. There have been 27 versions of the American flag since 1777. Each time a state was added to the Union, a star was added. We now stand with 50 stars and 13 stripes. President Joe Biden met privately with Pope Francis today at the G7 summit in what the White House is calling a meaningful moment for the Catholic president. The Pope is the first to attend the summit, and he spoke with world leaders about the risk of artificial intelligence and its use in modern weaponry. Nancy Cordes, traveling with the president, has the latest. A meeting of the minds at the G7 summit, where Pope Francis, who arrived by helicopter this morning, shared his concerns about artificial intelligence. The pontiff urged the world leaders gathered here to establish stronger global guardrails for the development of AI and to ban so-called killer robots altogether. 
The autonomous weapon systems can choose their targets using sensors with no human guidance at all. We need to ensure proper human control over the choices made by AI programs, he warned. Human dignity itself depends on it. The Pope was an early advocate for ethics in AI. An AI-generated deepfake of him in a white puffer coat went viral last year. In January, a faked Biden robocall told New Hampshire residents not to vote. Your vote makes a difference in November, not this Tuesday. That's just one example of what experts say are the potentially troubling implications for democracy. We're heading into a reality where what we see is not what we can believe because of AI-generated images and video. And that holds particular consequences for our elections, for our trust in political candidates, for our trust in news. Biden issued an executive order last year requiring domestic AI developers to share their safety test results with the U.S. government. One thing is clear. To realize the promise of AI and avoid the risk, we need to govern this technology. And there's no other way around it, in my view. In his speech, the Pope stressed that human emotions can't truly be replicated by a computer. And as if to prove the point, he posted a photo of his meeting with more than 100 comics and comedians at the Vatican on Thursday. He said that they unite people because laughter is contagious. Nancy Cordes, CBS News, Bari, Italy. We'll head over to the Weather Center now and check in on the temperatures. Connor, it's hotter out there right now than the Dallas Mavericks shooting. How long is that going to keep up? Yeah, well, we are looking at it cooling down like the Celtics today. And then as we head into the rest of the week, uh, and a week, it's going to start warming up. You see these rain showers on satellite radar? These are going to be the last ones we're going to see for a while. So if you like the rain, uh, maybe say your condolences as it moves out of our region because we are not going to see much in the way of rainfall heading into the next couple of days. All thanks to this area of high pressure moving on in from the west, and that's going to set the stage where it's going to be a gorgeous weekend. Tomorrow, 72, mostly to wall-to-wall uh, -wall sunshine. Tomorrow, mostly sunny skies, 77 for your Father's Day. Not a bad way to end the weekend. However, we are looking at some changes occurring. I'll get to that in just a second here. But with all that sunshine, you're going to want the sunscreen. UV index for Saturday and Sunday, right around a 9, indicating Sunburn time, less than 20 minutes, so uh, very bright sunshine here. We're at the time of year where the sun angle is very strong and uh, it can get burned as you witness in less than 20 minutes. But changes are coming, not for severe weather, but for extreme heat. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, we're looking at dangerous heat and humidity. We're looking at temperatures at or above 90 throughout all four of these days. Also looking at dew points in the uh, mid to upper 60s, low 70s as well. So. It's going to be a very muggy and hot stretch of weather here, unseasonably so, and uh, quite frankly, might be historically so as well. But future track showing very quiet conditions here. Get used to seeing this. Not a lot of clouds, not a lot of rain. It's going to be a pretty quiet stretch of weather, not even just on future track, but also on radar as well. Now, as we head towards Sunday night, looking at mainly clear skies, even heading towards Monday as well, looking at pretty quiet conditions. Now, temperature-wise. Falling down into the mid-50s tonight. Tomorrow, upper 60s, low 70s. A very nice day. Overnight, we're looking at temperatures falling down for Saturday to Sunday, mid-40s. And as we head to the afternoon, I think this model undersells us just a bit. I'm looking at highs in the mid-70s. But look at these temperatures as we head to next week. This is Thursday. Could have showed you Wednesday. Could have showed you Friday. Could have showed you Tuesday as well. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of these 95s. Uh, it's going to be very warm out there. And while this shows dew points at 6 o'clock Wednesday afternoon, evening, whatever you want to call it, it's still very muggy across the region. And uh, we are looking at some records ahead, potentially. Record high on Tuesday was set back in 1957, 92, we're forecasting 93. And look at Wednesday and Thursday. 90 was, are the record highs set back in 2007, 2012, respectively. Look at those highs. 94 that we're forecasting Wednesday, 92 on Thursday. It's going to be a very warm stretch of weather here. And that encounters uh, the heat risk here. This is day six. Look at that. Extreme. Very rare. I mean, this is a new model, but look at that. Even heading into day seven, it's going to be some very extreme conditions here. And heat risk, if you don't know, it uh, takes the account of feet on human impacts here in terms of health. So that's a very concerning thing we're watching out for as we head on in 
to uh, this stretch of weather here. Monday's the coolest day, so we start next week, and then we're looking at hazy, hot, humid conditions with sunshine all those days. So make sure you drink plenty of water if you're heading out to do anything, especially as you head out for the Dicks Open later on this week. Looking at all those uh, highs there, it looks like a lot of dads are going to be out mowing the lawn on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame them. Nice and comfortable. Rumble Ponies switch things up to honor a Binghamton native as they take on Somerset. 12 Sports has all the highlights after the break. Whether because of discomfort, lack of mobility, your lifestyle, or occupation, you sit inactively way too many hours a day. Introducing Ellipse, the premium quality automatic seated exerciser that strengthens legs, increases mobility, and boosts circulation without physical strain. Strengthen and tone your legs. Increase your mobility, flexibility, and balance. Plus, stimulate healthy circulation. It is so quiet that none of my coworkers even know I'm using it. My joints feel better. My knees feel better. It makes me feel stronger, too. My circulation is moving, I'm burning calories, and it makes me feel energetic. Perfect for home therapy. Whisper quiet to use while you work. Call now and order Ellipse, the seated exerciser that strengthens legs, increases mobility, and boosts circulation. Be one of the first in callers and get upgraded to the Deluxe Bundle. Get the faster motor that produces more than five miles of steps per hour, the non-slip mat, and wireless remote. Call now. is coming to Binghamton. A cross-country time speed endurance rally celebrating classic cars. Come see all the cars at Visions Veterans Memorial Arena on June 26th as the great race stops overnight in Binghamton. Beginning at 3 p.m., there will be live music, food, and much more. 135 vintage cars start crossing the finish line at 5 p.m. on Washington Street in Binghamton. The Great Race is back on June 26th. The Great Race in Binghamton is brought to you by the following... Six American flags have made it to the moon. The first in 1969 was left by Neil Armstrong. Five additional Apollo missions ended with an astronaut placing a flag on the moon. This is the Jeff Kai's Auto Sports Desk. Welcome on in. I'm Michael Villegas, and this is the Sports Desk. You are now entering the Pony Zone. -na 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 -na. As they switch to the Binghamton Creatures for the night to honor Binghamton native and Twilight Zone creator Rod Serling. Some nice uniforms for the Creatures as well as the first thousand fans to enter the stadium that were able to snag these nice jerseys. And not the only one getting a nice snag. Omar De Los Santos out in center field loses the hat but able to make the diving catch for the first out of the game. Then in the bottom of the uh, first with a runner on first, J.T. Schwartz just about hits the 400-foot sign, able to get an RBI double. Ponies on the board first. But there's something on the mound, something, and that thing is Brandon Sproat, who was a nightmare at 60 feet as he would put away batter after batter. He'd have eight Ks and only let up one or two runs, excuse me, and one run through three innings. But Ryan Clifford, two-run homer in the bottom of the ninth, would win this one for the Creatures 9-7 over the Patriots. 
in the Eastern League standings with the win tonight. The Rumble Ponies move back into third. They're two games back from Hartford and three games behind first place Portland. The Ponies and Patriots will go at it again tomorrow at 6.07. As for the big club, the Mets hosting the Padres in game one of that series. In the bottom of the third, JT Martinez getting a two RBI double on the mound. Sean Manaya would put away seven batters, four hits, and one run in five innings. Mets take this one two to one. Moving over to one of the best rivalries in sports, Yankees up in Fenway, taking on the Red Sox. Yankees getting going early. Alex Verdugo getting a two-run homer in the top of the first. Verdugo would also add an RBI double in the fourth and a two RBI uh, in the ninth, excuse me, Yankees take down the Sox 8-1. And it was an early tee time for some big names at the 124th U.S. Open. First round co-leader Rory McIlroy, one of first groups out, as well as the world's number one golfer Scotty Scheffler and PGA Championship winner Xander Schauffele. Second round at Pinehurst, number two Rory, four under at this point on 12. This one for birdie, and to put it back, tied for the lead. Just a couple more rolls. Rory finished the day with 72. He's three under heading into the weekend. Scotty Scheffler on five. He's one over, just misses to save par. World's number one flirted with missing the cut. He's five over. Choffley moved up the leaderboard on 10 for birdie. That finds the cup. He'd finish one under for Friday. Also surging up the board, Bryson DeChambeau. He's three under on Thursday, shot a 69 on Friday. DeChambeau goes into the clubhouse, tied for second with four under. As we look at the rest of the leaderboard, Ludwig Oberg sits atop the field. His one under 69 has him five under. A trio of golfers, one stroke back at minus four. That group includes the one leader, one round leader, Patrick Cantley. Rory, two strokes off the pace, tied with two others at minus three. And Shoffley, along with six others, round out the top ten, all one under par. In the NFL, the Buffalo Bills finished up mandatory minicamp ahead of their break before training camp begins. But the Bills are breaking some traditions this offseason. Bills head coach Sean McDermott electing to use third uh, minicamp practice instead of canceling the final day like they've done in past seasons. According to Sports Illustrated, McDermott is breaking the norm because of the amount of new players on this year's roster, only returning eight starters on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. McDermott saying, quote, a high percentage of new players, new faces, so the more reps we can get, the better, end quote. The 2023 AFC East champs will have five weeks off before starting training camp on July 23rd. Big day. NFL never stops. Baseball going on. It's the dog days of summer. And, of course, we got Dick's Open coming up in just right a couple. Right around the corner. Yeah, six days away. So we yeah. are all looking forward to it. So don't go anywhere, though. We have one more story right after the break. The Jetta received a five-star overall safety rating. So if you stars get in, we could also say it has a five-star interior. I don't think so. Okay. I thought it was a good idea. Visit your Volkswagen dealer today and get 2.9% APR financing or a $1,000 customer bonus on a new 2024 Jetta. At Spectrum, we know that Internet is a vital tool to help you fulfill your dreams. My dream is to become a video game developer. My dream is to get my online college degree. That's why Spectrum designed affordable internet and mobile offers to keep you connected. Get Spectrum Internet starting at $29.99 a month with free advanced Wi-Fi and a two-year price guarantee. Call 1-855-829-0039 or scan to call. Call now.
I'm gonna dominate this season. I do it to be the best at it. No one should have to fight their battles all alone. Work hard. Don't complain. This is going to be the best year. Take it in. Yet. We give it all out. Well, damn. Let's just get it started. I'm trying to reclaim my life, but so much of it is gone. You got me. The thing I think you and I need more than anything is distance. Something's off with my swing. Accept the things you cannot change. I have the courage to change the things that I can. Baseball is in my blood. Baseball almost killed you, JR. I haven't heard back from any of the schools I've applied to yet. You know why I'm worried about you? I'm not here about us. It's a team. I messed up. I did what you asked. You told me to make a choice. All American Homecoming. Season premiere, Monday, July 8th. It can bear over 4,000 times its own weight. And that's just the door hinge. Sturdy design down to the smallest detail, the Taos. Visit your Volkswagen dealer today and get 0% APR financing or a $1,500 customer bonus on a new 2024 Taos. Finally here at 11, it is time to break out the smartphone or your dedicated camera and get ready to shoot. In just a few short moments, Saturday is Nature Photography Day. Perfectly time for the weekend to get outside and enjoy the natural world. Could be a trip to a beach, the mountains, a state or national park, anywhere and everywhere. Beauty and nature and wildlife. Soak it in, take some photos. The North American Nature Photography Association invites millions of photographers out there to document nature through pictures. So that being said, Connor, I know Father's Day is coming up. Going to get out there document anything? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I will be in nature. We're, we got one of those inflatable pools, those big Intex pools. I think we're doing that tomorrow. I don't know what we're doing on actual Father's Day. I know I'm working, uh, but my wife told me that Rowan made some beautiful artwork for me, so we'll see uh, what he made. But yeah, no big plans for me in nature. Maybe a pair of New Balance 434s for either of you. Oh, ooh, the Grill Masters? Ooh, the Grill Masters. <laughs> I don't know. That's not, I didn't ask for that this year, but maybe next year. Thank you for joining us here tonight at 11. Come back for 12 News tomorrow at 6 and at 10 and 11. For all the latest on the headlines and the weather, head over to our website. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend.